everyone. I'm outside the DNC showing my support to Palestinians. Um, I know if I was in their country, they would accept me with open arms. So I just want to do the same here. So. <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire. Your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? Man, so today's the last day of the DNC convention. And the more that I watch it, the more that I'm in line with Margaret Sanger. Now, George Soros purchased a baby blender machine and put it right out front of the Coliseum. And it had about 25 women go in, get the vacuum, suck the baby out. All right. At first, it was kind of jarring. And I was kind of like, Ugh, what's wrong with these people? But when I see more of these people out here protesting, like this one here. Why are y'all voting for Kamala Harris? I don't want to lose my rights. Like, I'm a trans man and I'm gay and I have been pregnant and I've had an abortion before. And I don't want to lose that. I'm afraid of not being able to be myself anymore because from what I've heard, Trump's America doesn't want me to look like this. So that's why I'm here today and that's why I'm voting blue. The founder of Planned Parenthood was hitting on something and now I have done a 180. Now imagine if you're, you're, you're going to a PTA meeting and you have your kids, you know, nice and buttoned up, you try to instill some values into them and then you see this this mother come around with her child. Application of my husband's penis with his ashes in it that I have slowly been spreading around the gathering. And uh, he's here. What kind of life that child's going to have? Okay. And who's going to be responsible for it in the future? Me. Right? So I don't want to feed them. I don't want to house them. I don't want to clothe them. I don't want to put them in prison. None of that. We should be encouraged them to delete their babies. Mm hmm. So all you pro-lifers out there, put your picket signs down, get off their property and encourage them to do it. Give them a hug, give them 20 bucks and walk them to the Planned Parenthood. Okay. We need less of them. We need to shrink their pool. So stop encouraging them to have babies. No, we should be encouraging them to delete their babies. If they want to stop their lineage, fine. We need to talk more and encourage them to do it. Now look at this here. Look at this. Look at these people here parading around. You see all these guys here. This is the runt of the litter. Not all of them, but I say 80% of them. Their mom should have done the trick with the hanger. Okay. They're not going to procreate. Take them to and get them vasectomies. Fine. Cool. They were not going to procreate anyway. But it's these women here. These women, we need to keep it going. Let them have it. We should have a baby blender machine at every Walgreens in America. CVS too. Let them do it. Shoot. Our job as a conservative is to procreate multiply have four or five babies fine but them no they're not married they got tattoos they don't know what gender they are they potheads you tell them you encourage them to delete their babies all right so stop it shouldn't be a national issue anymore donald trump kick it to the states if the states want to do it or don't do it fine but we should not be talking about this anymore we should be saying, you know what? You're right. You're right. You should delete. You, you right there. You should delete your baby. That's all you need to be saying now. Shake your head, nod in agreement, 
encourage them to delete their babies. So why are we do why are we beating yourself and, 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 you know, threatening doctors, abortion doctors? Don't do that anymore. They're doing us God's work. Okay. You got to flip it around. You got to think of something different. Like, you know what? Maybe they are right. Maybe you should not be a mother. Maybe you should not be a father. You are right, sir, ma'am, whatever you are, whatever pronouns you are. Because we, I can have their kids co-mingling with my kids. No. You don't know what they teach them. Bestiality or, or trans species, transgender. No. Let them delete their babies, please. Okay. Now, Kamala, it's safe to assume that Kamala had one or two of these procedures done already. Okay. Cause she's cuckoo in the head. All right. She was a party girl and she couldn't have a baby to slow her down. Now, I don't know what, I don't know about you guys, but I've been with women that had their procedure done. The box smells like trash. What? Okay. The box, the womb smell like a tomb. Okay? So let them do it. Now, here's another one. Oprah Winfrey, she don't have any kids either. And it's safe to assume Miss Career Girl over here have done that procedure also. So think one thing that bothers me about Oprah Winfrey is she talk about the rich. Redwood forests, love those redwoods, to the Gulf Stream waters. I've seen racism and sexism, and income inequality, and division. I've not only seen it, at times, I've been on the receiving end of it. What the fuck is she talking about? Now, I'm not a big fan of Chris Cuomo, but Chris Cuomo has dropped some knowledge about this. Let's take a listen. A big theme here at the DNC is that they're going to go after corporate gouging, and they're going to go after corporations whether it's in taxes, largesse, uh, loopholes. The RNC, we heard the same thing. They're going after the elites, the two sets of rules. Let me reveal a reality to you that has to be spoken to here, okay? These are the soldiers. These are the men and the women that go back to their constituencies and their communities, and they fight. They take time from their jobs. They take time from their families. Republicans and Democrats alike, that's what they do. They need to charge these people up. They need to be able to get them on board. But there's another reality that is literally looking down on them. Greg, look at the ring of sweets, okay? This is not unique to Democrats. There is a game of money. When people talk about uniparty, we are strangled by the money reality in our politics. Those sweets start at 500 grand. You think there's like a teacher group up in there? You think it's like the Cub Scouts of Columbia County, South Carolina, that's up in those boxes? Some of them are lobbies and good things. The media boxes, you think they're free? Why do you think I'm on the floor? News Nation is not a broke company. Next Star is a massive organization. We are corporate media. We don't have one of those boxes because that's the game. You pay to play. Those boxes are filled with the same people that they say they're going to regulate. They are literally looking down on the faithful and being told, yeah, yeah, we're going to break down on them. We're going to make them pay their share. They paid 500, 700, a million, a million and a half to have those seats. They get hotel suites that are probably gifted to the party. And the same thing is true with the Republican side. And they're going to take them down. They're going to change how it is. They are looking down from on high at the people who make the difference in their communities. And that is the reality of politics. And I had my producer walk around and show you those suites. Now, they're not all the same. They're not all the same. But the reality is... But the reality is, in 2000, they spent $300 million on presidential campaigns. 24 years later, you know what they're expected to send, spend? $10 billion. Do you know how much money Harris has raised in the last couple of weeks? Hundreds of millions. And that's success. A lot of it's small donor. A lot of it isn't. The most dangerous money in politics is now legal money. Because of Citizens United. You've got to know this. The idea that they can fight against it is almost laughable. It's almost laughable. So look, look and listen when you are told these things, because I don't care what they promise you. Not here tonight, not at the RNC, not that Trump knows them, not that they don't own them. He did one of the biggest fundraisers I've ever heard of in my life out where I live. Millions of dollars a plate. That's the reality of politics. You see, 
And you have Oprah Winfrey here talking about taxing the rich. We're going to eat the rich, racism, sexism, uh, whatever she's talking about. Just straight hypocrite. Speaking of hypocrites, Oprah Winfrey, back in her days when she was a talk show host, she was a big fan of Donald Trump, a big fan. Last year, criticizing U.S. foreign policy. What would you do differently, Donald? I'd make our allies, forgetting about the enemies, the enemies you can't talk to so easily. I'd make our allies pay their fair share. We're a debtor nation. Something's going to happen over the next number of years with this country because you can't keep going on losing $200 billion, and yet we, we let Japan come in and dump everything right into our markets and everything. It's not free trade. If you ever go to Japan right now and try to sell something, forget about it, Oprah. Just forget about it. It's almost impossible. They don't have laws against it. They just make it impossible. They come over here, they sell their cars, their VCRs, they knock the hell out of our companies. And hey, I have tremendous respect for the Japanese people. I mean, you can respect somebody that's beating the hell out of you, but they are beating the hell out of this country. Kuwait, they live like kings. The poorest person in Kuwait, they live like kings. And yet they're not paying. We make it possible for them to sell their oil. Why aren't they paying us 25% of what they're making? It's a joke. This, this sounds like political presidential talk to me. And I know people have talked to you about whether or not you want to run. Would you, would you ever? Probably not, but I, I do get tired of seeing the country ripped Why off. Why would you not? I just don't think I really have the inclination to do it. I love what I'm doing. I really like it. Also, I, it doesn't pay as well. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but, you know, I just probably wouldn't do it, Oprah. I probably wouldn't, but I do get tired of seeing what's happening with this country. And if it got so bad, I would never want to rule it out totally because I really am tired of seeing what's happening with this country, how we're, how we're really making other people live like kings, and we're not. What do you, it was so big that she wrote letters, wanted to be his running mate. She wanted to be Donald Trump running mate. Before he was a racist, before he was a sexist, she was a big fan. She wanted to be on his ticket. She wrote four or five letters to Donald Trump, wanted to be his running mate. And now all of a sudden, the hypocrite is talking about Donald Trump is a racist. Donald Trump is a sexist. Donald Trump is a greedy, rich man. Years ago, you were helping Oprah out, and she was sued, right. and it was having a big impact on her. Mad character. And I thought it was great. And, you know, Oprah used to really like me. She was here many times. Yeah. She loved my key lime pie. We have key yeah. lime pie, and she loved a lot of things about Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. yeah, Oprah Winfrey, the biggest hypocrite. <laughs> out of here. Anyway, if you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you hypocrites, get your ass off my lawn.